So I have here with me Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu expert, my Jiu-Jitsu coach, and a dear, dear friend of mine, Alexi Ruskanen. How are you doing, brother? Um, I'm very good. Um, how are you, man? Well, I'm good, man. Like I was saying, like with the knee, uh, I can walk now better. Uh, I cannot walk over long periods of time. I, I've been like uh, timing how much I can walk. Now I can walk like 10 minutes without, uh, without our hurting. You know, yeah. so I'm taking it, uh, I'm taking it easy. I'm doing now a little bit of exercises to make the knee a little bit stronger. Like uh, yeah, some, uh, some squats, nothing too serious, you know. But it's, it's, it's getting hard to be active, man. Like it was so easy to become, uh, to get into the lazy mode and I'm still there. I'm mm. trying to get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it happens easily. Mm. Actually, today I was, I was planning to go to Barreto and check the trainings out. Oh, oh yeah, are you coming? Oh uh, man, like I will go on Friday for sure. It's like all of a sudden I got another call. After this one, I'm gonna uh, talk to another fighter. Yeah, you know, so and that came at the last minute. But I had I had a plan because also I wanted to see some of the guys. Uh, Yuri was telling me to go have some coffee after the training, and also I really want to see your trainings, man. I missed it. Yeah, yeah, you should visit. Yeah, we'll be waiting you. Yeah, brother. So tell me, Alexi, like uh, you've been training BJJ for ten years. Yeah, yeah, for about ten years. Okay, where where what from what gym? Uh, originally, I started in MMA Vanta, which is a gym in a bomb shelter in, in Vanta. And uh, that's, that's where I started when I was just turning 16. What made you got into this? Sport? Why Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Um, I actually uh, remember this one night I was uh, watching TV. You know, before BJJ, I didn't do any uh, legit exercise. You know, skateboarding doesn't count. So, uh, <laughs> I uh, I wasn't an athlete, but I happened to watch this one episode of, uh, uh, you know, Bully Beatdown. Yeah, you know, Bully Beatdown, yeah. Yeah, MTV used to have that on uh, and played on nights. So I watched that, and then there was a, there was this one guy who said, like, oh, I'm a, I'm a brown belt world champion in, in BJJ, and I had no clue what BJJ was. And then they showed a clip of uh, him fighting in the world championships, and I'm like, oh, this is this is really cool. Like they have the geese on. It's really cool. And I looked it up where it was a gym that I could chain. And I happened to be lucky. It was like maybe a 20 minute ride with a bike to the gym. And, you know, that's how I started. Man, that's nice. So it became, you saw it on TV first. I remember this bully bit. Actually, the first time I saw that show, I was in Finland, 2006. The first time I came here. Yeah. Yeah, and actually my roommate at that, at that time did Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I had a, a, I was aware what it was because of media, but yeah. uh, in Bolivia, it was unheard of at that time. Nobody would know Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and it still was very popular, the, um, the, 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 the mainstream martial arts, you know, like karate, yeah uh taekwondo uh kung fu and all that so it's just very rarely you would see guys doing kickboxing uh doing muay thai doing uh, brazilian jiu-jitsu i think very like very few in all of bolivia and obviously mma nobody and then when i came to finland my 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 uh my roommate uh, did brazilian jiu-jitsu i don't remember which gym and yeah. then through him i met that that sport uh, was known quite a lot already in Finland by 2006. Yeah, yeah, I guess it had a little bit of a reputation then. Yeah, at, at least I would say more than others, of course. And then like, here it was quite good. I noticed uh, one of the things that I noticed is that uh, you guys are very disciplined when you get into the sport, uh, including yourself, because as you know, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a sport of, uh, of patience. You know, you need to take your patience, it takes time to get into a certain level, uh, it's so complex. What made you hang on for 10 years and not leave the sport? It's, a, it's actually a good question. Um, uh, probably the, the, the sport has so many challenges. It offers a lot of different things. Uh, we've been talking about this with a lot of friends of mine and in BJJ you can get uh, 
the the social aspect out of it. You get a lot of friends. You can talk to the people in the gym. It's really fun to hang in the group. You get good exercise exercise with it. You don't have to. If you need to choose one sport and you choose to do BJJ, usually you will stay pretty, not maybe not like fit, but like healthy. It'll keep your cardio up and it'll keep your uh, mobility up. And then there's all the, the challenges with the knowledge and the skills. And probably I got hooked on the skills. I, uh, I've always loved, uh, you know, hunting skills. Uh, for some reason, I really like to, uh, you know, ac either acquire new skills or then really focus on like a few skills and throughout my whole life. And at that point, after a couple of years, I kind of chose to focus on BJJ until I would be like really satisfied, satisfied with it. But it's still not even close. So probably gonna take a few more years. Man, like, uh, what, what, what is your goal in BJJ? What do you wish to accomplish? Now I would really like to uh, break through in the European and World Championship levels. So I've uh, competed in the Europeans and the Worlds a couple of times. And actually, I've lost like four to five times in the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. So I've lost right before like uh, getting to the podium, which has really tested my uh, patience. But I would really, really love to break through that barrier, you know, be the, the Finnish guy to get into the black belt podium because it's, it's a rare ac accomplishment from our uh, uh, country's BJJ athletes. The, the level is really high and, you know, we don't have a lot of people training if you compare to the Brazilians or the Americans. So that's what I would really love to do. Man, that's amazing. Definitely you will get it. I, I, I always, it's always a pleasure to see you spar. I have told you, man, it's, it's, oh, how, thanks. You're, you're so, it's like you have a finesse behind it. You glide, man, even <laughs> though it's like you're, you're there and you're wrestling, you're grappling, but it, like with you, you glide through. It's very smooth. It's just a pleasure to see you, man. Like at least when you, when you spar, all my attention goes to you. I just like, Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Look, look what he's doing. Oh, oh damn. It's so cool. It's very nice, man. And, and, and obviously not to mention your coaching because I feel that your coaching is so good in a way that anybody can learn jujitsu. You, you break down the movements in such a very easy way that everybody understands kind of like jujitsu for dummies type of way, you know? Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, like I'm the dummy and I'm learning a lot. I hope I am. <laughs> oh yeah, you did a lot. Yeah, you uh, progressed a lot. The back end. just in one summer though. Yeah, man, I, I have to admit, like I really just enjoyed it, uh, I, and I cannot wait to get back. It's a great sport because before training with you, I, I I did it maybe a couple of times. Not like uh, not courses, just one or two classes. Yeah. And I would not understand it. I would like see what they were doing. I would not be able to replicate what they were doing. And then when I would get to a certain position, I was like, okay, what do I do now? And yeah. I, I was yeah. lost. But now I, I, I think I'm finding my, my path, you might say, you know, and, 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 and I think it's a great basic to start because I want to have at least one MMA match. Yeah, you know, that's right. Really at least by, by next year, hopefully. That was my goal this year, but because of the knee, that went down. Because I told you I'm very much interested in competing. I want to compete, obviously, in BJJ. Have that solid foundation built very yeah. well and then move on to MMA. Because um, yeah. I started myself in Kung Fu. Uh, yeah. I'm a black belt in Kung Fu. And then, oh, really? Didn't yeah, know that. man. Like, uh, you, you got you to gotta pay a little bit more attention about your students, dude. Um, yeah. <laughs> Did you say, uh, yeah, train Kung Fu in uh, Bolivia? Was it? Uh, in Honduras and Florida. Oh, nice. Yeah. I, uh, in Florida, I got my black belt. Nice. There. Yeah. But I was never able to pursue more Kung Fu because from Florida, I moved to Bolivia. And at that time, they didn't have Kung Fu in the city that I was living. 
No. And a friend of mine that uh, she was doing uh, karate kyokushin, she advised me, why don't you do kickboxing? You might like it. I tried it. I love the full contact aspect of it. I stay there and I had a amateur and professional career there uh, very well. Mm -hmm. But Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was different. It's different, man. It's so nice. I just yeah. love it. It's so strategic. It's not only about brute force. And also, I, ha I have to give credit to you, man. It's like, because if you have a bad coach, you do not enjoy the sport as much. Yeah, it, uh, too true. It, it affects a lot the way you're being coached. Of course, man. How long have you been coaching, man? Uh, I started coaching pretty young. I was uh, kind of like an assistant coach in the beginner's class after I got my blue belt, which I was maybe 17, 18. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I started helping out with the classes back then and, and then gradually moved on to teaching them myself <laughs> then teaching the advanced class. And uh, from there on, I uh, moved on until now I'm uh, coaching the, all the advanced class in the gym. Okay. So we're talking about over five years, right? Uh... Yeah, I've been coaching for, if, if in years, it's maybe like eight to seven. Eight to seven years, man. Yeah. That, that, so you have significant experience as a coach. What do you enjoy yeah. more, being an athlete or coaching? It's tough. It's tough. Cause they both have their really good. It's hard to compare. Cause coaching is it, it gives uh, like different kind of uh, satisfaction. It gives a different kind of feeling of you know happiness than than achieving your uh, let's say uh, competition goals. But it, it's really tough, really tough. I, now when I'm in the, in the kind of competitor stage, I have to lean more towards the, the competitor side because it's all, all of my training is built around that. And the coaching now kind of comes second, even though, even though I do it kind of like a full day basis, kind of like daily. But okay. they both have really, really good qualities. It's uh, hard to say which one's better. Yeah, I can imagine they both will bring you gratifying experiences in different ways. Yeah, right? yeah. and they yeah, both help each other out. Okay, yeah, of course. Yeah. They create some, like a sort of balance as well. Yeah, usually uh, the, um, it's, it's not uncommon in gyms to take young purple and uh, blue belts to help you teach the classes. Because it, it helps you uh, articulate the skills and the knowledge that you have to other people. So you have to really think about what you want to do, what you want to show, and why do you want to show it in that manner. So teaching the stuff that you do in sparring that works to other people really, uh, how do you say, organizes all the kind of like info in your mind and you understand the, the skill that you do even better when you teach it to other people. So it makes, makes it you better in sparring too. Sparring, man, that is something that is a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, in these kind of sports, there are some uh, sports that don't have that kind of like full contact sparring, like really free sparring, but BJJ, kickboxing, MMA, all these, these sports have. And that's usually the, the hook that people get, you know, fall yeah. in. I noticed also that uh, the people that do BJJ are more chilled than people that do stand, like train stand-up, uh, kickboxing, Muay Thai, those the boxing itself. Mm -hmm. They're more, more laid back, more humble also. Mm -hmm. they, do you, would you know why? I'm not sure that the culture around BJJ is pretty chill, I guess, you know, we listen to music in trainings, we, you know, give high fives before sparring, the, the whole culture around the sport is pretty laid back. And maybe it's maybe you need different kind of uh, aggressiveness in stand up sports than in BJJ. I'm not sure. 
you can you kind of do yeah it's the uh, definitely is it's a big eye opening when for first timers that want to do kickboxing and they get to spar mm. uh yeah. because uh you you start getting hit in the face of course a lot you start receiving those punches you don't know how to react so like you mentioned not an aggressiveness per se but a drive to continue and to be aware that you are getting hit and to have a, a reflect or a technique to avoid that it takes mm -hmm. a lot of energy of course right yeah and and you have even though that um that drive can can transform into somewhat aggressiveness you also yeah. need to control that as well because yeah. uh, i'm pretty sure in, in jiu-jitsu and if you spar compete out of anger you will not get get to a far a far in that competition right same would be in in, in kickboxing uh if you fight out of anger you will have that aggr aggressiveness yes but you will lose technique you will lose focus and yeah. therefore the person who is more concentrated has the advantage you know it has yeah. happened to me like i have lost out of anger and everything and, and trust me like the, the punches that i landed in those fights were magnificent but <laughs> it blinded yeah. me in a way you know because i was i was reckless and the guy who took the time to actually study my movements and recognize my footwork and and, and this and that and where what would be the most common punches i would be throwing because he studied all that i and he told me that uh that he obviously he got the, the double he got the win out of that and that is a is a really good learning experience definitely yeah. that had taught me not to to calm myself down as you notice when i'm in class i'm all the time smiling yeah you yeah know? i love it it's great yeah I, I love to have a good energy and i love to provide that good energy with everybody i love to encourage my my teammates in every way possible you yeah. know uh but sometimes it just um it's just different when everybody's frustrated you know what i mean yeah and that have i notice in my limited experience in jiu-jitsu that happens a lot less in jiu-jitsu than in kickboxing for example yeah it might yeah might mm -hmm. be something but what about you are you planning to stay in jiu-jitsu or do you have any plans to move into MMA or train other discipline or move into another sport? Um, I'm probably, I used to train boxing for like a year just for the, you know, fun of it. Uh, I might try to learn some MMA boxing later on, but for now I'm just gonna stick to uh, grappling like Nogi, BJJ, compete as much as I can. And then afterwards, when I have more time, then, then I'll maybe focus on, you know, learning the skills in MMA and boxing, but probably not going to compete. Okay. <clears throat> and um, uh, so you're going to do just like for the, for the experience of it? Uh, the other sports? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, as I said, I, I like to learn new skills, you know, learn how they work and, you know, feel confident with different kind of skills yeah. and that's probably the reason i would you know try to train other sports so i would uh, n you know have the basic basic skills in there too so you're you're making also a living out of brazilian jiu-jitsu yeah that's true so you're 20 like a 24 7 invested in that sport yeah actually yeah i'm also a, a student so it uh, that kind of affects a little bit but uh, Besides my own studies, my own training, I only do coaching. So I'm pretty, yeah, pretty involved in BJJ. Are you planning to have your own studio, your own gym someday? You know, that's a really good question because uh, now I'm probably, you know, finishing my school in like a month. In you know, I've done oh, all the work. So nice. yeah. So now I'm, you know, starting to think, you know, what what I'm gonna do afterwards, and. The idea of running my own gym, of course, it would be really cool. I really love it, but it would also take some energy and focus away from the competition stuff. So I'll, I'll have to see if I'll fo focus on the competition stuff first, and then maybe later on uh, switch the focus to uh, running a gym. It would be really cool. 
Yeah, man, definitely. I, I will definitely be there if you open the yeah, link for sure. And if you yeah. need help in promoting it, just let me know, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need, yeah, we need your energy, man. <laughs> Dude, so tell me, tell me about Fubu. A Fubu, all Fubu, the yeah. Oh yeah, it came up. So when I started, we used to have this uh, warm up before training where we would run a hill, you know, even when it was uh, winter. Nice. Yeah, so we train, yeah, we train in a bomb shelter, so the the hill is underground, but it's still really cold. And I came to the training, and then we started doing the the hill sprints, and I had this big uh, uh, Fubu hoodie on me, you know, and I was I was really small when I started BJJ. I was a lot, uh, probably under sixty kilos. Okay. Was really, yeah, really small compared to now. And then uh, one of all, uh, one of my uh, coaches later on then noticed the hoodie and, and just started shouting like foo boo and it stuck. Probably took uh, maybe two years for people to know my real name. And really? Just, yeah, they just referred referred to me as Fubu or Tekid or something like that. <laughs> And then that, 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 that was, yeah, when I saw that, because uh, you, you used to have a, like a blog, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was reading about it. Very insightful, by the way. But I noticed FUBU. And I was yeah. like, is it like the brand for you, uh, for us, by us? Is it, is it, yeah. Does it like the brand? Why is it? So I had to ask you, man. Or maybe was it like a, maybe a Finnish word that here it, it meant something different? <laughs> yeah, I know. I just came from the, the big old FUBU hoodie. Mm. And your black belt, Alexa, you got it in MMA Vanta. Yeah, yeah. True. Who, who, like, who gave you the black belt? Who was your coach? Um, I'm not actually sure how how it's how who like really gives the decision that like makes the decision to get a black belt. Mm -hmm. I got it from my own coach, uh, Ilari Grönholm, who's also a black belt. And uh, above Ilari is. The, the founder of our team, Pedro Duarte. And yeah. so I got the belt from my own coach, but I'm not sure if it's, you know, if you look at the IBGGF papers there, it might be said that uh, Pedro gave me the belt. All but right. but you know, I got it from my own coach, even though Pedro was also there. So how long you've been a black belt now? Black belt now? Uh, a little over a year, year and a half, maybe. Man, that's a, that's really quite an achievement, man. Congratulations on that. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, wow. Like uh, achieving, well, even just, pa I feel even passing from one belt to another in BJJ is quite an achievement. But to reach bel uh, black belt is big. It shows that you're dedicated, you're good, you have extensive knowledge. Where did you stop with the bloggings and the uh, and the YouTube channel? Because I was looking at the videos as well that you have made there, yeah. and it, it's very funny. You made one video uh, breaking down the color choke. Mm -hmm. It was very insightful. Like you break down everything. Everything was broken down, and you mm -hmm. can pay attention. And even people that would not understand what ju the the sport of jujitsu is would understand that. But it was like uh, the first episode didn't have music, and then you added music, which made it more entertaining to, yeah. to read those breakdowns. But what, how come you stopped, man? Those, those were good. Uh, purely just because I uh, like ran out of time, you know. Okay. Yeah, I had to, this you know, time. I had to prioritize a little bit my own training over the stuff that I did on social media and and all that. I really enjoyed it. I really loved doing those breakdowns. Now I'm thinking once I finish my school, I might start doing them again, you know, uh, in a way that I film all the techniques myself and explain them. But I just ran out of time uh, doing uh, the full-time competition training, coaching, between trainings, I did the school work and then there was, you know, family and all that stuff. So just had to drop something out. Yeah, I get it. Are you planning to do it again though? Yeah, yeah, now I'm just, like this week, I've been thinking about it, how I would do it differently, how it would be better. And it might, I might do some kind, of, uh, some kind of work after I finish the school in this fall. Man, that would be good. That would definitely be good. Are you, would you be aiming to have like a, your name become like a brand or you just want to provide that useful knowledge to the people? Um, or both? Yeah, kind of both. 
because I'm, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of stuck between the what I studied is uh, the social services. So I've been doing work in in schools with kids, uh, young adults, and then I've been doing coaching in BJJ. So now I'm a little bit in between on where do I put my full focus on? Uh, is it going to be like branding and, and working on coaching and making my living out of the sport, like fully out of the sport? Or am I going to do the competition side of the sport, but get my living out of the, the social work that I would do with kids and, and uh, young adults? So it de all depends on what I'm going to decide uh, after, uh, after I finish the school. So I'm going to have to finish the school, take a little break. I've been studying and training for, for almost five years. And then I'm going to have to figure out what I want to do next in the next five to seven years. And then I'm going to work towards that. Man, you, ha you sound like a very, very well put together guy, not only in the sport, but as like a, as a person as well. Thanks. Yeah, that, like uh, that, that, that. That's something but that uh, portrays a lot in you, man. Uh, it shows a lot of confidence, credibility as well, who you are as a person and not only as, a, as an athlete. Um, so tell me with, with all these plans that you have, uh, do you have any knowledge on how to become a pro athlete here in Finland? Because that is something very different. As, as you know, uh, I work with fighters from the US and Canada. Yeah. Uh, one from Japan, but in Finland, I've been having, it's been quite challenging to try to yeah. get a, a fighter to either be interested in the platform or to be interested in like starting a, a, a career as an athlete. Mm. Uh, how is it here that? It uh, depends on the sport. It, a lot depends on which sport you choose to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, combat sports, they don't have a lot of uh, media appearance. You don't see BJJ, MMA news that lot. MM, some MMA news nowadays you can see on like on the papers. But uh, if you choose to do like ice hockey, you know, mm -hmm. skiing, you have a much better chance of making a living out of it because the, the bigger firms usually, uh, usually sponsor the kind of sports that they can get, you know, uh, some... I don't know. Actually, I don't know the word, but you know, media coverage out of. Yeah. And and BJJ is in in Finland. It's not one of those sports, so it's that's making it really hard. But when you get someone who's telling you like, okay, maybe that uh, BJJ is not one of those sports, but let's mm -hmm. make it one. Let's work together. You know. Yeah. I'll help you put your name out there. I help you get sponsors. And all through your BJJ skills, experience, and accomplishments, because Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is same as MMA. Obviously, MMA is getting more popular more and more, but Brazilian yeah. Jiu-Jitsu as well. Uh, people are having a lot more understanding of what the sport is and what does it, uh, it, uh, it take to become a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu athlete. And now you get new platforms like this uh, Submission Underground, for example, who yeah. was created by Shell Sonnen. And they got introduced new rules as well to make the, the whole competition side of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu more appealing for the masses, for the, for the mainstream people, you know? Yeah, that's really important. Yeah, so it's, why not catch that wave right now and try to make your own brand through Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? That's, that's what I think, that's what I feel. But it's been, have, it's been challenging to, portray, to give that message out there in Finland, man. Yeah, um, I don't, I'm actually, it's, it's really good that the, there are a lot of changes coming and, you know, I'm kind of the, the younger generation that started BJJ, even though I started at, at an age of 16, which is really old if you want to be a, a like top athlete, a, like world-class level athlete, yeah. that's, you know, I don't, people started like, I'm not sure they started like four to six years old in Brazil. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they, they have a 10 year head start, which is making it a little bit difficult. But the, the work that has it's, it's been done with the, the kids and the, the youngsters, it's really important for the, the future of the sport. Uh, 
even uh, in in the world class level but even as a, if you want to make a living out of it because when you have more mass more uh, like uh, kids training it it's easier to uh, let's say if you want to get funded you want to get like funds out of somewhere or you want to uh, spot you get want to get sponsors on some events when you have a lot of kids you have a lot of younger adults and all those it's it has a huge effect on how the sport is viewed from people who do not know what the sport kind of is. Yeah. And for the future, the more young kids that will train, like let's say if they manage to train eight years and they're 18 years old, they have a much higher uh, chance of winning at the world-class level than if you start at 16 or 20. And that's going to affect a lot because if they do well at the Worlds and the European level, of course, that's going to get a, like more media coverage. People are going to get more interested. And then throughout there, probably it's going to affect on how others view the sport. Of course, of course. For example, one of the, the biggest dreams I have is for my two kids to do combat sports. You know, yeah. obviously, it's just my dream. It's not that I'm going to force it on them. If they choose to do it, that would be amazing. But I think, for example, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu would be a good sport for them to start if they would be to be, if they would be, if they would have an interest in combat sports. Because not only it, it, it had, like I was mentioning at the beginning, it helps you with uh, technique and all that, but it's, it gives you patience. It gives you discipline, like all the other sports as well. But one of the biggest uh, good things about it is like you don't get hit in the head as much. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, and like imagine, because they, I heard that uh, kickboxing, you can start training at eight years old or 10. And some kids do, but from my personal point of view, point of view that's maybe a little bit rough if you want to, if you want to compete at that young age in a sport like yeah. kickboxing. But in sport yeah. like jiu-jitsu would be a, a, a lot better, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. BJJ and, you know, like just wrestling. Wrestling is really yeah. good for kids. Do you do your wrestling yourself? Uh, no, not like if you don't count like no gi stand up. Mm -hmm. That's like the, the closest as I go to, uh, to wrestling. But no, I haven't done like, like wrestling, wrestling. Okay, but uh, uh, you know Temu, right? From from Bareto. Yeah. He he's really enjoying your class a lot. He's telling me because he's now in the, right. on the beginners course. Yeah, he's in the beginners class. Yes. Yeah, he's really liking it. And then he told me that last time he tried the wrestling, the luko by me. Yeah. And he's just like, nah, fuck that. Like that's not for me, man. I'll, I'll stay with Muay Thai and BJJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's different. Yeah. yeah, completely different, man. Yeah. The, the strength you need to have in your legs for that sport is insane because you all the yeah. time crouch right yeah you, yeah you're crouched and a lot of that strength comes from the core which is kind of odd but it does and it's really good uh, we uh i saw my friend who has two kids and the other kid uh, only plays football and the other one only does uh, you know wrestling Okay. And after a couple, yeah, after a couple of years of training, like both uh, trained their own individual individual sport, they switched. So the footballer started going into the wrestling, and the wrestler started uh, visiting the football practice. And they noticed that even though the the footballer is much more, you know, explosive, uh, he doesn't have uh, the coordination at the same level as the younger one does from wrestling. So, so it, when the younger one went to a football training and they had to do like cartwheels, headstands, backward rolls, like flips, something like that, the younger kid could do it, but the other footballers could not. And then the footballer, yeah. So it, it's, it's really good. It's, it gives a lot of basic coordination for, for other sports. So if you do wrestling for like a couple of years when you're a kid and switch mm -hmm. to football, baseball, basketball, you have a really good foundation in that sport. So. Do you think like Finland may adapt uh, the mentality to give out certain opportunities for athletes like uh, United States? For example, wrestling is huge in the United States. You wrestle yeah. in high school. Uh, what is like high school here? Uh, Lukio? 
right? Lukia, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, you wrestle in, in, in college, in university, and then sometimes you get a career out of it. But here, yeah. you don't have those sports teams, right? If I'm mistaken. For example, when I was in Laudia, there were no sports teams. You would play for fun. Yeah. That's it. Uh, do you think that would change within time or? It might be good to, uh, some, someone would need to go and, you know, push it more. Was, you know, there, I'm not sure what is uh, more preferred in the, the teaching, how do you say, teaching system nowadays. Mm -hmm. I guess yeah. like arts and, you know, the like mathematics are pretty uh, on top on the top level that you need to like on the, the first focus is that you need to do arts, maybe mathematics, sports. Yeah. But nowadays when you see the kids in let's in, in, at any stage in school, they don't have that much, you know, sports a couple hours a week, maybe. And then there are few, let's say high schools and uh, elementary schools that only have their like main emphasis is on the, the sports. Okay. But, but those are really different. There's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about it. So there's no, there's no balance. Either it's just like you concentrate on the academics, or you concentrate on the on the sports side. There's there's nothing like in be in between. Yeah, there might be. I'm not sure because I, I'm I haven't studied it that much. Mm -hmm. But I know for sure that, that there are few high schools uh, which they have like the the. The, the school is and the school system is built so you can either focus on your own training or you really are into sports like they have their own swimming halls our next to our house there's a uh, uh, the school that it has like own swimming pools and stuff because it's 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 emphasis on sports yeah but that kind of schools there aren't that much and okay I'm not sure if there's what the in between looks like. All right, I think it would be good, like just uh, well maybe because like um it's very usual scenario for me like in school you have those teams you 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 have the the football team you have the basketball team yeah uh, in some schools you have the the wrestling team but I notice here is there's there's uh there's none of that you have the clubs but the private clubs or the the uh, social clubs that you go and do yeah. sports, whatever. But I think like uh, with comparing to how good the Finnish education system is and combining that with sports, I think that would be a win-win, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, giving not, not the mentality that if you become an athlete, you have this big success, successful life, but like teaching more about what does it take to become an athlete? You know, no. uh, because it's it's a hard work. It's not easy. It's dedication, yeah. discipline, sacrifice. Having all that said, you've been training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for ten years now. What would be your biggest biggest accomplishments in the sport? Biggest accomplishments. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have to say probably my first first. Uh, Finnish national championships. That was probably the, the biggest there was for me that happened. When did that happen? Uh, I was a purple belt at the time. So six years after I started, maybe 2016, 2015, somewhere there. Man, I, th I think you wrote it on your blog, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, I, you were with short hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a bus cut for years, you know. Dude, that was that was so weird to see. It was like I had to focus that him. Am I? Because I, I, I was reading about Fubu, but I didn't know that. Uh, well, I was not a hundred percent sure that Fubu was you. Yeah. In the picture, but yeah, man, you wrote about it. I read everything about that blog. It it definitely was a big accomplishment for you. Uh, yeah. what you went through and then you get this big surprise and you're number one man congratulations on that yeah thanks yeah and now you recently won a competition right that you got a second place yeah i was in the uh, finnish nationals again i got second in my own and the open weight yeah that's cool man that, that's very congrats you, you did you get you got a cut right yeah in the open weight finals i faced the same guy uh, second time and then 
probably a couple of minutes in, uh, we uh, banged our heads. So I got a cut right here and we had to end the match because of that. So no, uh, really? Um, yeah. You couldn't continue? No, no. We, I had to uh, head out to uh, make it uh, patched up. But you didn't get stitches out of it, or did you? Oh, oh yeah, I got stitches in. How many stitches you got? Like, maybe like two or three. Yeah, oh, not... man, okay. Yeah. Man, but that, those, those things you got to wear with pride, those battle scars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although it's hidden. I don't have like that cool, you know, cool <laughs> mark here. It's under there somewhere. Man, just grab a marker every day before you go out, just paint it. Yeah. As bad as yeah. Alexi goes out. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Then before I let you go, would you like to give a shout out to anybody? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thanks. Thanks for you, man, for inviting me here. I really enjoyed talking with you, man. I hope you all the best. I really, I've, I've been really enjoying watching you, you know, train and do your, uh, your own business thing. It's really inspiring, man. You know, Thank you, man. Thank you. And I'll, I'll get back to your class soon. As soon as the knee gets better, I'll be there. And I'll be there on Friday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, besides that, I want to thank, uh, th thank my coaches. I want to thank my uh, sponsors who helped me out a lot as we talked. It's not easy sport to, you know, get uh, you know, support and sponsors for. But luckily, I've, I have a lot of really good uh, sponsors and uh, how do you say people that I can work with towards the, the world level. Nice and, man. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, I have to thank my, my family because they see, because they see me a lot here at home and I'm usually not always, but usually really tired because I'm beaten down from all the training. And even though I'm really tired, they still, you know, cheer me up and they don't mind about it. So thanks for them. That's great, man. You mentioned you mentioned a shout outs to your coaches and your sponsors. Who yeah. are they? Oh, my coaches. Nowadays, I have my the ones that I used to work with a lot was uh, Ilar Graham, who gave me my black belt, Alexi Tolin, who coached me at competitions, uh, Ville Vuorela, who is has been kind of like my my manager and always helped me out. I love uh, the first time he helped me out was I couldn't afford a gi, you know, when I started training. I didn't have the money and he said like oh you want to compete but you don't have a gi well well i'm gonna get you a gi and he bought me like first competition stuff and always when i wanted to like enter a competition but like i don't have any money he was like oh, i'll pay for it you know just paid me to get into competitions uh then there's janne pekka pietilainen uh, a finnish coach black belt i guess he has uh three stripes in his black belt he man he, if you think I have a lot of knowledge, you have to talk to him. Like I fall second any day, you know, he knows so much. He's really wise and gives a lot of good advice. He's been coaching me now and helps, helps a lot. And then there's my sponsors. You know, there's uh, my home gym. As I said, they sponsor me a lot. Uh, Myrin Kuntokeskus, which is a gym where I, you know, try to build this, you know, guard pulling muscles of mine. Uh, then there's a uh, Zepway, and last but not least is uh, Holtz, who now helps me with the gear. Yeah, Holtz, because yeah, you know sometimes I, the black belts, you know, they need a lot of gear when they travel, a lot of training gear. They help me out with that. It's really good. Nice man. Well, glad that you got all those names, and and uh, I'll make sure that they reach out to your shout outs. Uh, again, yeah. it's a pleasure being your friend, training with you, you being my coach. I miss your trainings, man, but I'll catch you on Friday. Yeah, I'll see you on Friday, man. Say hi to the team over there, okay? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll say them tonight. All right, brother. Take care, man. You have a good one. Yeah, thanks. You too. Bye.